In the last video, we made this generate normals method that takes a shape data and returns a shape data that represents the normals for that shape data. So this is just another geometry with vertices and indices. We render it and we get the normals. For example, I am drawing the normals for our plane. It looks like a Halloween death trap or something you definitely do not want to fall into. But it's nice that we can see all the normals for our plane. The normals stick straight up and using that normal information we can do a lot of things. The first thing we'll do is calculate lighting. Let's pick on one of these normals. Here's a normal at what looks to be a greenish vertex right there. It's pointing straight up and being normal that means it's perpendicular to the plane at that point. Go figure. It's kind of easy to do perpendicular vectors for a plane because a plane doesn't bend. That normal is perpendicular. It's also length one. We like the length one because when we do the dot product with normalized vectors, the cosine pops out. We want to use the cosine for the lighting equations as I discussed in the previous videos. Let's pick on another one. Here's a green vertex. It has a normal. Oh, it's identical to this normal. It's going straight up. And so using these normals, we get an idea of what the surface looks like for our geometry. Let's uh, turn off the planes normals and let's look at the arrows normals. Between the last video and this video, I did a hideous amount of copying and pasting. I did all the vertex arrays for that normal geometry. I sent the data down. I did everything we've had to do in previous videos to render a geometry. I'm just rendering the normals geometry. You'll notice, though, when I render the normals geometry, I have to say GL lines instead of GL triangles. GL lines means there's two vertices per primitive, and the primitive we're rendering are is lines, and lines have two endpoints. So that's kind of nice. Let's let's see. Here's the plane. I'll not draw the plane normals anymore. Let's do the arrow. I'll bring in the code to say, hey, let's render the arrows normals. I spent a hideous amount of time with the arrow to get its normals correct, and you can see that the normals are correct. We have normals coming off of the surface. Now, I want to focus on a few of these vertices. Let's let's focus on... Oh, of course I moved my camera. Ah! Huh, there we go. Let's focus on this vertex right here. You'd think there's one vertex right there, but there's actually three. I had to duplicate the vertex information right here. The only thing that's the same between all three of those vertices is that they have the exact same position. I had to put three vertices at this position. The way the hardware is set up, you should know, with streaming data, we process one vertex at a time and we only get one attribute or one unique attribute per vertex. For example, I wanted the top of the arrow to be red. So I put a vertex there with the top of the arrow set to red. But I wanted the side of the arrow to be green. Oh, guess what I have to do? I gotta put a vertex there with the side of the arrow set to green and oh I wanted the back to be gray so I put another vertex there with the back being gray and I had to do the same thing at that corner and at the corner underneath the plane that you can't see and down here and you can see there's a lot of duplicate vertex information that's unfortunately common because I want to vary the color I want to vary the attributes depending on which surface I'm talking about. The same is true for the normals. On this side, the vertex that represents this side of the arrow, I wanted the normal to come out this direction because this normal is perpendicular to the surface at that location. Same thing with the top. The vertex that represents the top, I wanted the normal coming straight up. Same thing with the vertex that's attached to the back of the arrow, I wanted the normal coming that direction. So I had to duplicate the vertex not only to separate the colors, but I also had to separate the normals. So there's three vertices there. One vertex has green and a normal headed this way. One vertex has red with a normal headed this way. And one vertex has gray with a normal headed this way. You can see I had to do that in several areas of the arrow. That's quite common. In fact, right in here is actually quite interesting. Maybe I can illustrate. There's a vertex here, normal coming this way. Vertex here, normal coming this way. But there's actually not a vertex here with the normal coming this way to do the back of the arrowhead. The back of the arrowhead is simply two triangles that makes, oh, that's terrible, that makes up this rectangle right there. But you can see the normal coming that way. And then if we fly underneath the plane there, if I can get my camera to go down, you can see, yeah, look at that. That's, that's pretty intense on the, on the corner tip 
of the arrow right here. There's a normal going that way for the head of the arrow. Normal going that way for the back of the arrow head. There's a normal going this way for the bottom of the arrow head. Then this white line is actually coming off of that vertex there for this green side. But looking at the arrow, you can see, well, let's go down here. You can see the tip of the arrow head. I really should have translated this arrow. Let me translate this arrow. Hold on. There you go. I put the arrow higher in the scene so we can see what's going on. But but the arrow tip, I don't know why it took me, it took me a lot longer. I, I'm just dumb when it comes to math. It took me a lot longer to get these. Uh, sorry about that. It took me a lot longer than it should have to get these normals coming off the top of the arrow head there. But I eventually got them calculated. In fact, at first they were like pointed this direction or something lame and I thought, oh, I wish I could just see the normals and so I came up with the idea of generating the normals, rendering the normals, and then I could see that my normals were totally messed up and I was able to go in and fix my math. But now we have all the normals for the arrowhead and then let me show you the arrows or the normals for the teapot. It's actually, <laughs> oh, let me just show you. I'm gonna, we have two teapots so I'm going to draw the normals for both of the teapots. This is kind of funny actually control of five build this run this and there's the teapots oh that looks like a teapot i do not want to grab looks more like a porcupine that looks painful but these normals are critical and yeah, these normals tell us the direction of the the orient the orientation of the surface uh, and we'll use that for lighting let's let's examine some of these normals you can see well it's kind of hard to Let's do a side view there. There we go. Maybe a little bit of a side view. You can see at this point on the teapot, this is perpendicular to the surface at that point. Here's another vertex. That's perpendicular. Another vertex perpendicular. You can see here there's two vertices to represent perpendicularness, depending on which side of the teapot you're on. And then let's go over here. Ooh, do you want to grab that handle? It's kind of cool, though. It looks like a cornfield if you've ever driven by a cornfield if you haven't man you are neglected uh in cornfields you can see rows and rows and rows of corn stalks and so that's what we're kind of seeing here is rows and rows of corn stalks as i move the camera up and down you can see more and more rows see that's kind of like driving past a cornfield isn't it anyway look this is like the death trap right here in the handle that just looks like it's painful but look at all those normals on the, at the surface area each one of those normals represents what it means to be perpendicular to that surface and using that perpendicularity and a length of one we can calculate lighting we can calculate some physics we can do a lot of cool stuff right here at the back of the handle that's perpendicular 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 if you could imagine taking someone's scalp that's one way of thinking about it you can if you could scalp somebody take their scalp off and and bend their scalp around you take their hair or their scalp and bend it around you can see all their hair sticking straight up from that scalp that's probably a pretty morbid way of doing it but oh look at this the uh handle here all the insane amount of normals coming off of the handle perpendicular 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 that sort of thing so let's just for tickles let's turn on the ultimate death trap i'm going to render all of the normals both for the teapots, or the yeah, the teapots, the plane, and the arrow. I'll build this and run this. You can see lots of normals, lots of death trap. I do not want to dance in between those teapots. That just looks like a painful experience. Anyway, uh, I'm going to turn off rendering the normals. That's kind of intense there at the top of the teapot lid. You see that? Let me, oop, let me get our view back down here. Yeah, you see that cone of normals there at the top of the teapot lid? That just, ouch. Anyway, we're going to use these normals to calculate lighting. We're, I already explained the diffused lighting equations. We also need these normals for specular lighting, which is the third lighting model we'll look at. I'm not going to render these normals anymore. I wanted to show you these normals. In the next video, I'm going to show you a, kind of a cool little trick, a different way of rendering normals besides doing all these spikes. I like the spikes because they're very visual, but there's another way to render normals. And then in the video after that, we'll get back to doing ambient light and not rendering our actual normals, but rendering, not ambient light, rendering diffuse light, not rendering the normals. Instead, we'll render the lighting, which is a lot more interesting than rendering these normals.